All right, you're welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and there's some good news. In fact, uh, wonderful news. You know, for people in prisons now, you'll get the opportunity to study all the way to the tertiary level. So whether it's a diploma you want or a degree, uh, there's been a new initiative that's going to allow people like them um, you know, to study in the university. So once you come back, it's easier to get reintegrated in society because you have a degree, you can find a job, and there are lots of good things that will follow as well. And so this is a conversation I'll be having um, with Prince Solomon Stouf, and he is in charge of Plan Volta Foundation. And also in the studio, I have DSP Adamu Abdul Latif from the Ghana Prison Service. Um, and so one, uh, to be precise, it's good to have you in the studios. Tell me about this great initiative, because we know that for prisoners, they only get to the secondary school level in terms of education, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how was this initiative introduced and why? Are you going to start? Okay, go ahead. Let Mr. Stoof, you can go ahead. Since you, Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it falls under your foundation. Yeah, as you rightly said, um, over the years, Ghana Prison Service has given the inmates opportunities to have, um, to write or to study and write BC and YC, YC yes. in, the, in, in the prison service while they are in custody. Mm -hmm. However, if anybody is aspiring to have a higher education, there was nothing like that. Okay. And we being in Plan Vital Foundation, we have some of our members who work with the tertiary education and some of us are tutors and TAs in universities. Okay. So we decided that why don't we come together and help the inmates. Mm. Now helping the inmates also means that they must be they must be able to get certificate after any program that you introduce them to. Okay. So in that light, we put together a proposal to use this University of Cape Coast, mm. and then they bought into the program. Okay. And then an MOU was signed, and then we went to Ghana Prison Service also, and then they also uh, told us that they even have plan to do something like that. Okay. So once we've come, then it's, it's, it's a good idea. So they also bought into it, That's and MOU idea. was signed, right. and then we took it from there. So has it started or you're still at the discussion stage? It has started. It As started, we speak, okay. an admission has been given to inmates. How many of them? We, they had 60 inmates have gotten admission. Wow. 30 are doing educated education-related courses. Okay. And 30 are doing business-related courses. Wow. Out of the 30 doing business-related courses, 22 are doing management and then it are doing accounting. And these are courses they chose themselves. They chose themselves. But it looks like there are only some limited courses. Or yeah, for now we for have now. limited courses. So this yeah. is the introductory stage. So which prison are we? Um, in Sawan prison. In Sawan, medium security. Exactly. Let me ask DSP. I mean, why has it taken so long to give this opportunity to inmates? Yes, um, I wouldn't say. I would say perhaps it's the right time. Okay. Um, fortunately, now the prison, especially in Sawan medium security prison, can boast of a very nice edifice okay. that serves as the school complex. Okay. Yes, where this program is comfortably taking place. Ah, there's yeah. a school complex. Yeah, there's in... a school complex right. in Sawam right. that runs the basic education, gives basic education, uh, junior higher education, senior higher education mm. to prison inmates. Okay. And over the years, the school started from somewhere from 2008 mm -hmm. and has trained a lot of. Um, candidates who are now graduates, okay. and we ha still have some of, some of them in our custody. Right. And that served as uh, a disincentive, because mm -hmm. after serving your, your, after getting the certificate, if you've not finished serving your sentence, then you continue on to be in prison. So that really, yeah. that really didn't motivate other prison inmates to want to go to school. Okay. Yeah, so when this opportunity came, mm -hmm. we, we grabbed it as the right opportunity for those who have been able to upgrade themselves up right. to SHS level to really um, have themselves uh, accredited with diplomas and degrees. and degrees. So when they come out, they can really... What, what's been the response like in the prisons after the introduction? It's been very positive. Okay. It's been very positive. That has stimulated a lot of immediate interest right. in wanting to educate themselves. Mm. Because now they've realized that it doesn't end at the SHS level. Yeah. All right. Yes, and so if they are able to go through and get good grades at the SHS level, there's this opportunity for them. To I have, I have this question to ask because when it comes to reintegration, especially yeah. for you know inmates, um, it's difficult, especially because you you come out with that tag mm -hmm. that you're an ex-convict, yes. and so even to secure a job becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. So they're getting the degrees, they're getting all the diplomas and stuff. Mm -hmm. But what what are we doing outside the prisons to ensure that people like these are not tagged? 
so that even if I have the qualification, I mean, now they're asking for experience. Yes. I only have the qualification in the prison mm -hmm. and I'm coming out with no experience. What's the guarantee that I'll even find a job in the first place? Thank you. First and foremost, let me quickly mention that on the certificates they are awarded, mm -hmm. nothing on that certificate shows that this person had the certificates whilst in prison custody. Okay. Right from the junior high certificate up to senior, senior high. high, up to the, even the diplomas and the degrees okay. that they are perceiving now. Okay. Yeah, so that, to some extent, deals with the problem of stigma. Mm. So, and if it is not part of the recruitment procedure yeah. that you reveal whether you, you have right. been incarcerated before or not, I think, it, 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 therefore, that it, it's not necessary for you okay. to reveal that to your employer. Mm. You that, shouldn't? Yes, if the employer doesn't request for it. Okay. I believe you understand. Yes. Yes. And that also, because now, most prison inmates, the fact is that they are reforming. Mm -hmm. yeah, because of the psychological and other reformative programs that have been put in place. All right. So people out there, there are some people who now even prefer to work with prison inmates because they've seen the other side of life and they are better placed mm. to take certain decisions uh, that will not bring them back to prison. Okay, yes. okay. But I know that for a lot of employers as well, they request for police reports. So that's what I'm saying, that the moment I get my police report and it states clearly that I'm an ex-convict, mm -hmm. then that becomes a problem. I'm not trying to overshadow the whole conversation, yes. but I'm just looking for ways by which people would understand mm -hmm. that, yes, we have introduced this initiative in prison for these people, but coming out, it won't serve as a deterrent, the fact that they are ex-convicts. Yes, so that's why I keep asking that exactly. as well. But okay, so you're telling me that you started with one of the prisoners is it for both males and females, or are we starting with just males for the now? The opportunity was given to all. All. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we did okay. not discriminate. So right. those who um, filled the form came up to fill the form were given. And if you if you meet the requirement, mm. we are given the admission. Okay. Yeah. So how easy or difficult is it funding? Because clearly they are not paying for the tuition. So who is yeah. paying for it? Yeah, we are supposed to raise funds okay. to pay for it. Currently, we are using our own funds. Friends are supporting. Mm. We've written letters to a couple of um, organizations, and so some of them have given indication that, um, well, it's a good idea, we support. But they want to see. They want mm. to see and they want to believe it. And I believe um, through this platform, mm -hmm. um, those who have received our letter will now believe what we are saying yeah. is true. And then to come to um, help. All right. And so that is the challenge. We are using this platform to appeal to the general public, right. um, the religious bodies, and then social, um, how do you call it, um, other organizations to help, to, help as to well. donate, to help, because we are supposed to um, pay everything. Is there no the government platform. fund for this? Um, Not yet. The, yet. the program is yet to be launched, fully launched, and okay. once it is fully launched, then a lot of people will hear it. Okay. You know, if, if you have heard about something, it makes it easy or you, you'll be more convinced to support than if not heard of it. Yeah. So yeah. in the past, we're working uh, underground. by the, by the mm. underground. Now we want to come out now. All right. So ha if program. anybody wants to support, how do they do so? Yeah, we have an account number. And then also we have a um, contact number that okay. they can use. Can you kindly can drop them? Yes. Our, our contact Please number. Please go ahead now. and drop them. Now they can call 0244-226-444. All right. I repeat, 0244-226-444. All right. Or 0244-521-258. 521-258. Okay. Yeah. Any website, any uh, bank account number that... If anybody wants to contribute to Yes, you have a bank account number here. Okay. Um, the bank account number is Ghana Prison Service Bank Account Number, mm -hmm. miscellaneous account. That is 101-86-31-53-24-27, Bank of Ghana. Can you please repeat? Okay. I repeat. GPS, that is Ghana Prison Service, 101-86-31-53. 532427, Bank of Ghana. Mm. All right. And you must indicate that inmate tertiary education. You have okay. to indicate it. You have to indicate. And then if you want to give cash, you can walk into Ghana Prison Service Headquarters, HR Department, and give your cash donation there. Mm. You can also call the numbers that we've provided. Okay. And then... We'll, we'll and I hope that this money will not be diverted into people's pockets and private businesses and all of that. That is why I gave you the Ghana That's Prison Ghana Service Prison account service. number. Okay. 
All right. Anyway, so I've been speaking to Prince Solomon Stuff. He is in charge of plan. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. I have a lot of stuff. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Stuff. He's in charge of Plan Volta Foundation, and they have partnered the Ghana Prison Service to provide tertiary education. And so this is in collaboration with the University of Cape Coast. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. All right. And I've also been speaking to DSP Adamu Abdul Latif from the Ghana Prison Services in Sawam. Mm. Thank you all so much. I think it's a wonderful initiative, and I'm looking forward to having all prisoners across the country uh, get educated to the tertiary level. Who knows? Maybe we'll even introduce the masters and yes. the PhDs yes. for people who might stay in longer, at least to keep them active and keep them you, their brains also uh, active as well. So thank you so much for joining me on the thank show. You. You're welcome. Thank all you. right.